Look at verse 19. Philippians 1, 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. All right, so the supply of the Spirit is an answer to Paul, uh, answer to prayer for Paul's comfort, peace, and grace in times of trouble. It is not so Paul can speak in tongues in prison or do miracles, but so Paul can continue to trust the Lord and that God would use Paul wherever he is. Now he says something there about the supply of the Spirit. The supply of the Spirit in verse 19. The supply of the Spirit is the only source of supply we need in relation to everything else we need. So, you know, there's a, I mean, maybe you didn't hear me correctly because I expected to do more pushback on that. But uh, the supply of the Spirit is the only source of supply we need. Now, you should be thinking to yourself, well, what about the Bible? Don't we need the Bible? What about church? What about prayer? What about the brethren? And that is true. All those things are needs, but the only source of supply we need for everything else we need is the Holy Spirit. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so without the Holy Spirit, uh, prayer is of no use. Um, church is of no use. Bible reading is of no use. Uh, nothing you do in your Christian life is of any use at all unless you have the Spirit of God behind it. Well, look at Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I mean, the notes are of no use without the Spirit of God behind it. The preachers of no use without the Spirit of God behind him. So you can you can have all those things, and it's only a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. Now you can be in church this morning, and I'm thankful you are, but if you didn't come to the Spirit of the Lord, uh, your labor's in vain this morning. Because it's not in the Spirit of the Lord. Hey, brother. What's up, man? Did you bring my notes? <laughs> <laughs> Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So every Christian has needs. And God will supply all of uh, those uh, but the supplication of those things or the supplying of those things will come through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You say, but I have a Bible. That's a need. Yeah, you have a Bible and that's a need and you need to read it. But yeah. reading your Bible will not supply your need unless the Holy Spirit is behind right. your eyes and in your heart as you're reading it. Right. Um, you can go out and pass out tracts and you need to pass out tracts. But yeah. if the Holy Spirit is not in that activity, if he's not in your... Um, motivation or he's not even in the movement that you're having at that time you're just passing out tracks possibly casting pearls before swine mm -hmm. rather than going to those who actually need it if you're not sensitive to the holy spirit and where he wants you to go and where he wants you to be and say what he wants you to say yeah you're doing all the right formalities of christianity but the holy spirit's not behind it the holy spirit condones passing out tracks the holy spirit condones bible reading the Holy Spirit condones prayer, but if all those things are done as vain repetitions, you just do it and do it and do it and do it, but there's no power behind it. There's no spirit behind it, the Holy Spirit behind it. It's just vain. Uh, coming to church can be vain repetition. Right. That's why a lot of Christians don't go to church. Or they do, they just check it off the list and they go home and they go about their merry way. They don't think about the next service because they've already done their service. Because there's no spirit of God behind them going. They're just going because it's what they do. And they attend the ones they want to attend. And they don't ever ask the Holy Spirit, should I go to another one? Or how should I go to church? And they don't ask the Holy Spirit, you know, how am I supposed to behave while I'm in church? They just, it's vain. It's all vain. Because their, their Christian life is vain. It's vain repetition. They just do stuff that is the form of Christianity, but there is no Holy Spirit behind it. They're not motivated by the Holy Spirit. They're motivated by the brethren. They're motivated by fear and the fear of man oftentimes. Uh, they're motivated by the flesh. They're motivated by habit. They're motivated by religion. They're motivated by the past. They're motivated by their denomination, but they're not motivated by the Spirit of God. 
Um, all you are, if you're a Christian, and all you are is doing everything you're supposed to do without the Spirit of God behind it, all you are is pushing a car. Yeah. You ain't driving. Mm -hmm. A car, a person pushing a car, yeah, the car is moving. Yeah. yeah. But it's you moving it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But if you get in a car and it's gassed up and it has its, you know, everything's working yeah. properly, and you turn the ignition and it goes, that's the power in the engine the cylinders, the fuel tank, and all that stuff coming together, combustion, mm -hmm. yep. all that stuff together is working together to move that car. But you as a Christian, you think, well, I'm going places in life. Yeah, because you're pushing the car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. But that is a lot of Christianity. I imagine about 80% of the congregation here this morning, that's their Christian life. Okay. That should hurt you. Yeah, that should, say, that offends yeah. me. It should offend you. It offends me. Yeah, that's about 80% of my Christian life. Mm -hmm. I'd probably say 90% of my Christian life is me doing it. And about 10%, the tithe, is the Lord doing it. Mm -hmm. And you've got to think about yeah. that. Because if you don't get a hold of that, you're going to think, I'm doing God's service. Mm -hmm. You ain't doing God a, a, a lick of good at all. Because you're going about it in your flesh, in your own personal experiences, your own personal intellect, your own personal self-will. But it ain't spirit filled. Mm -hmm. yeah. Self will, but not spirit filled. And that's a real danger to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's where Laodicea comes in. Because the other part of that is, is Laodicea rolls in when the Laodicea Christian thinks, well, in order to show the supply of the spirit, we got to make a show. Okay. Yeah. We got to have the lights and the lasers, and that's what gets people to come in. Well, that ain't the spirit of God either. That's the flesh. Yeah. And you might be able to pack it all out, and you might have a feeling. But that ain't the Holy Spirit's feeling. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of your flesh. And you might feel good about reading your Bible because you checked off a box, but that's not a godly feeling at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you shouldn't feel good about reading your Bible. You should feel convicted about reading your Bible. Yes. Yeah. Anyways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that is the form of Christianity we've come to expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, without the supply of the Spirit, there is no salvation. Without the supply of the Spirit, there is no comfort. Without the supply of the Spirit, there is no discernment. Without the supply of the Spirit, there is no understanding of the Scriptures. Without the supply of the Spirit, there is no holiness. Without the supply of the Spirit, there is no fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> None of those things. You say, well, I don't do this and I don't do that. I'm holy. No, you're not holy. You're regimented. That's not being, that's not, you might have an acts of holiness, but if it ain't the Spirit of God, driving you not to something or to do something, it's just you doing it. It's just you've been browbeaten into doing something and you just learned how to do something or you learned not to do things, but you're not not doing it because you're trying to be holy in the power of the Holy Ghost. You're not doing it so you can be proud that you don't do certain things. Yeah. Or you do certain things so you can be proud about what you do. Yeah. And the reason why you know you're that way is when somebody's not doing it, <laughs> you judge them harshly. Or when somebody is doing something you don't do, you judge him harshly. Yeah. And you don't think of, and the Lord Jesus Christ says, I didn't come to judge. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. Well, what do you, who do you think you are? That's right. Amen. Well, I have the Holy Spirit in me to judge. Yeah, you do, but how are you judging? Right. It's a whole lot, there's a whole lot more about the attitude behind what you do rather yeah, than just amen. what you do. Amen. And a lot of Christians' attitudes are bad when it comes to dealing with other Christians about what they do or don't do. And a lot of times our attitude is bad when it comes to what we do or don't do. Because we're not motivated by the Holy Spirit. We're motivated by other things that we substitute for the Holy Spirit. See, it's not good. It's really not good. Um, you need discernment. The Holy Spirit is what gives you discernment. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. The Holy Spirit is what gives you discernment. Christians who... Christians who just do without discernment, it shows a lack of Holy Spirit in their life. Christians that just do without discernment, it shows a lack of Holy Spirit in their life. You say, but I don't have, I'm saved to have the Holy Spirit in me. Yeah, you do. But why does the Bible say be filled with the Holy Spirit? I mean, we all know we're baptized by the Spirit into His body, don't we? Yeah. We all know that we're sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. We know that, right? We all know that we, He's given us the earnest of our inheritance. We all know that, right? So we know we don't have any less of the Holy Spirit 
that we need for salvation. Isn't that true? Yes. If you had anything less of the Holy Spirit as it pertains to salvation, you wouldn't be saved. Yes. So when you got saved, you got all of the Godhead inside of you. Right. But how much is the Godhead getting out of you? The more you yield to the Holy Spirit, the more you're yielding to the Godhead and the more God can do with you. The more you just yield to religious denominations, religious works, the less the whole Lord has of you. Because what has a hold of you? Not the Holy Spirit, but your religion. Your religion. And now your religion is not pure, it's defiled. You say, but I'm in a Baptist church. That's the undefiled religion. No, that's not. That might be the undefiled denomination, but it ain't undefiled religion. Right. Undefiled religion is you and the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father walking in perfect communion one with another. Trying to do all those things which please Him. Doing all those things which honor and glorify Him. Not to bring attention to yourself, but bring attention to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Christians don't have biblical discernment because they are not walking in the Spirit. And this is a real shame to the body of Christ because he's given us the Holy Spirit so we can have discernment. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, verse number 12, 1 Corinthians 2, 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Why? Why did God give you the Spirit which is of God? That we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. And there's a lot of free things that God has given you with your salvation. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Mm -hmm. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Um, see, a lot of Christians have been browbeat by man's wisdom, by man's mm -hmm. words. Mm -hmm. And they have absolutely no spiritual understanding as to why they are doing or not doing certain things. They have a total lack of understanding spiritual responsibility because they never learned it of the Holy Spirit. They learned it of men. Now, it's good to learn from men. Otherwise, you wouldn't be in church this morning. But learning from men and applying that knowledge in a way that you understand what it is you're applying is two totally different things. Uh, you, can, you can, sister, take notes all day long but if those notes are simply on paper and they never get written on your heart, all you're doing is just vain repetition. You need to get these things so deep down in your soul that you can then tell somebody else about why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you how you know if you know something. Can you teach somebody else? Right. Amen. You'll never know that you know something unless you can tell somebody else about what you know. Yeah. You can help learn somebody else in the scriptures. Yeah. You can. You know, I, I, I just said that on purpose, just to kind of give you some hillbilly idea there. Yeah. But you need to you need to learn somebody about the scriptures because you yourself need to know that you've learned something. Why are you learning anything? It's so that you can commit it to others likewise, yeah. Yeah. so that they can. How, why do you think this generation is in a mess? Because yes. the previous generation was taught a lot, mm -hmm. but they never actually learned it to the extent that they could then train right. up others. Right. Amen. Yep. 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 So the reason why they stopped going to church is they never learned why they should go to church. Yep. They can't teach anybody else about why they're in church when they're in church. Why do we go to church? It's just what we've always done. That's not why you go to church. Why do you read your Bible? It's what we're supposed to do. That's not why you read. You're not under the law. Amen. Now the law is good and it's holy and it's just. And if you read your Bible because what you're supposed to do, fine. But you better learn to grow beyond that because there's going to come a time where you're going to say, why am I reading my Bible? I don't know why I read my Bible. I don't have to read my Bible. And no, you don't. But if you're going to read your Bible, it's going to take the supply of the Holy Spirit in that reading to keep you motivated right. to read it. Amen. Amen. And then to discern what you're reading. Yep. But the map, yeah, help us, Jesus. Is that what you said? Yeah, right. Help us, Jesus. Yeah, we need help. <laughs> I mean, well, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Now, I understand an unsaved person is a natural man who cannot receive it. But you know the flesh is a natural man too. Yeah. Yeah. The flesh is the natural man. And the flesh cannot receive. So do you ever wonder why you don't get anything when you go to church? It's because you're sitting there in the flesh. Your natural man has showed up this morning, not the spiritual man. You ever wonder why you don't get anything when you're reading your Bible? Because it is the natural man reading his Bible. You say, but I'm saved. I'm not the natural man. I'm the new man in Christ Jesus. 
No, the new man is in you. The old man is on the outside of you. And whichever one it is that day, reading that Bible, going to the church, that's the one that is doing the work. And so, yes, you can, as a Christian, go to church, but you're going to church as a natural, fleshly, carnal man who cannot receive anything. So you leave saying, I didn't get anything today. It was the preacher's fault. Maybe it was because I forgot the notes. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe you don't know why you're here. Right maybe you have no idea why you're in church. Maybe your natural man is the only reason why you're here this morning. <clears throat> so maybe that's why you don't get anything when you go. Right. It's because you're going in the flesh. I'm not saying you're coming in lasciviousness and you're coming in sinful behavior. I'm saying you're simply not walking with the Lord. You're simply not going in the supply of the Spirit. You've supplied your own strength to be here. Right. Yeah. And not the Spirit supplying you with what you need to be here this morning. Mm -hmm. Or anything you do in your Christian life. That's why you don't get anything out of going out. And why you don't go up to the street. Mm -hmm. You don't go up to the street because you don't get anything out of it. That's your natural man. I don't get anything out of that. That's because your natural man won't get anything out of that. Right. But the new man, the quicken man, knows that's the right place to be on Sunday afternoon. Right. Amen. And the ones that are out there, you should always get something out of it. Yeah. Well, I, all I got was a bunch of fingers. That's because the natural man, that's all he got out of it. Yeah. The spiritual quicken man says, I got something a whole lot more out of that than just a bunch of fingers. And if all you do is talk about the fingers and the curse words you heard, that's because you were doing it in the natural man, not the new man. Mm -hmm. Because the new man says, man, Lord, you got a reaction out of people. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Man, Lord, a lot of haunts, a lot of waves, a lot of fingers, a lot of curse words. Lord, you must really be doing something because the, the power of God, the, the words of God don't return to you void. And so, Lord, you're in that. Yeah. But see, Christians don't do a lot of Christian activities because they don't get anything out of it. Well, there's two things wrong with you. One of two things. You're not saved mm -hmm. or you're walking in the flesh and you don't realize it. And I dare say more people are saved, they just don't get anything out of it because they're walking in the flesh even though they're doing spiritual things. And then so years go by of not getting anything and they say, well, I can get this much at home. Yeah, you can. Because the natural man is going to sit at home and get the same things out of church that he got in church and he's going to think well if I can get the same things out of church I can get in church I must not need church no the natural man don't need church yeah. Yeah. but the new man does yeah. but see the natural man escapes by with thinking I'll need a little dose of it mm. Mm. Yeah. but the natural man is the other things in the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him so the preaching is foolishness Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. All those things that you need are spiritually discerned. They're not carnally discerned. You cannot discern spiritual things with the flesh. And you can not And you can only discern whether you're walking in the flesh or the spirit by the Holy Spirit. For he that is, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who knoweth the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So God has supplied you with the mind of Christ. Amen. Yeah, he supplied you with it. So, but, but the spiritual man is what's going to discern the mind of Christ. The carnal man can't do that. The natural man cannot discern. Let me show you why. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. You ever wonder why you can't understand spiritual things? It's not because you're a dummy. It's not because you're lazy. It's not because you're not saved. Though all those things could apply. But let's say for a second, you're none of those things. You're saved, you're not lazy, and you do study and read your Bible. Why are you still not discerning spiritual things? Why don't you understand the things pertaining to Jesus Christ? Well, because the natural man cannot understand spiritual things. And God has given us the mind of Christ to understand the Lord Jesus Christ and the things pertaining to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you're going to understand anything about Jesus Christ and the things pertaining to Him, His Spirit, His Word, His life, His will, His church... 1 Corinthians 15, here's why you can't understand spiritual things in the natural state. 1 Corinthians 15, look at, uh, oh, let's look at verse 44, I'm talking about the body. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. See, the body that you were born with is a natural body. The body you're going to get when you get glorified is going to be a spiritual body, a heavenly body. All right, so you live in a natural body right now. That's what you live in. 
So you are in a battle of flesh and spirit every single day for the rest of your life until Jesus comes. Because you are in a natural body trying to live in a spiritual body. Because as a, as a Christian, you're in the body of Christ. Is that right? Yes. Is that right? As a Christian, are we not in the... Did He not baptize us by the supply of the Spirit into the body of Christ? Isn't that where we are this morning? We are in the body of Christ, and He is the head of the body. Is that what the Bible says? Yeah. All right, so if we are in a spiritual body, being in the, in, in the body of Christ, spiritually speaking... We are also here in a physical, natural body. Is that right? Yeah. So what are we battling? We are battling how to walk in a spiritual body while physically walking in a natural body. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? So how do I discern a spiritual body while walking in a natural body? Well, God says, I'm going to give you my mind. Let this mind be where? In you. Where is it going to be? Yeah. All right, how do we get this mind? By Christ, Jesus. By Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which is also where? Alright, so we have to have a mind in us that is also in Christ. Is that what it says? Yes. Philippians 2. Let this mind be in you, which was also where? In Christ. It's in Christ Jesus. Did, did he say in Corinthians 2? He says, we have the mind of Christ. Is that what he says? So he says, let, allow, is that what it says? Let, is that what that means? Let, yeah. allow this mind, which he has given you, to be in you. Is that what it says? Yeah. Allow this mind that I have already given you to be actively working. Mm -hmm. In the natural physical body that you're walking in, I need you to activate the spiritual mind. Why? Because you're in a spiritual body and a natural body. And you can't understand a spiritual body strictly by walking in a natural body. So you have to work at letting this mind, which is Christ's mind, be activated in you on a daily basis. Yes. 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 And so when you're not getting anything out of reading your Bible, out of passing a track, holding signs, preaching a sermon, teaching a Sunday school class, and all those things can be done by militaristic, regimented obedience. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Yes. But if, if you're not getting anything out of all that, why? It's because you're doing it in a natural body and not a spiritual body. You're doing it with the natural mind and not the spiritual mind. Can I just say this? Jesus Christ had a dual nature. A physical, natural body of all man and a spiritual, heavenly nature of all God. Is that right? He's God manifest in the flesh. Is that what it says? Is Jesus Christ all man? Is Jesus Christ all God? Absolutely. Now he has shed that natural, earthly, physical body, which they crucified and hung on a tree, and it stayed in the tomb for three days and three nights. Is that right? Yeah. And then Christ was resurrected the third day. Is that right? Yeah. And he ascended up into heaven. So now he dwells in the heavenlies in a spiritual body. Is that right? Yes. All right. Where are you seated right now? Heavenly. All right. In heavenly places. With who? Jesus. Because he's there. Is that right? Yes. All right. But you're also seated down here, aren't you? Yes. So you're in a natural body sitting in church this morning, and you're also in a heavenly body seated in heavenly places. If you don't get anything, it's because you're simply, in your mind, sitting in church, and that's the only place you are. And you're not thinking about, wait a second, I'm up there with Christ. Uh, as much as I'm sitting here in a natural physical body in chairs, hearing my voice, I should be listening to the voice of the one where I'm seated in heaven. That's right. And a Christian who doesn't have a mind, who recognizes where he's at positionally in both places, he's only going to hear my voice and not the Spirit's voice. Watch 1 Corinthians 15. Natural body, spiritual body. He says, verse 44 again, there's a natural body. Is that what it says? Yep. There's a natural body and there's a what? Spiritual. Okay. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Notice it says the last Adam was made a quickening what? Spirit. Okay, so a quickening spirit is a spirit that quickens you. Mm -hmm. It is a spirit that quickens you. Doesn't the Bible say the word of God is what? Living and active. Quick and powerful. Sharp. The word of God is quick. What does that mean? It's alive. It's a quick and powerful book that is alive. It is a spiritual book. But see, when you read it, you're reading it as a natural book. With a natural mind in a natural body. The only way you're going to get anything out of a natural book 
with a natural body and a natural mind is to yield to the spiritual makeup of this book, yes. to yield to the spiritual body, and to yield to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And He will supply you with the wisdom and the understanding and the knowledge and the discernment to enjoy what you're reading. That's right. Amen. That's, right. Amen. That's what we're dealing with. All right, look at verse 46. How be it, that was not first, which is spiritual. Listen, Adam was not spiritual. He was natural, natural body. You are not spiritual. As much as you like to say you are, you're natural. And the only way you become spiritual is when you are walking in the spirit. That's how you become spiritual is to walk in the spirit. All right? But that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual. For the first man, the first man, that's you. In your natural body, the first man is of the earth, what? Earth, earth. What are you? Earthy. The first man is of the earth, earthy. Is that what it says, church? Yes. Mm -hmm. It says you are an earthy individual. You came out of the dust of the ground. You are an earthy, natural individual. Yes. But the second man is the Lord from where? Heaven. He ain't come from the earth. Right. Where did he come from? He came from heaven. Ain't that right? Yeah, yeah. He said, but he came out of his mother's womb. Yeah, but he didn't get there through the seed of the man. No, no. He got there through the seed of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost put the seed of God into the womb of Mary. Right. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. That's what the Bible says in, in Luke chapter 1. That's what it says in 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. God the Father put into the, the, the womb of a woman, the Holy Ghost came upon her, overshadowing her, and put in her the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ. As he say, we're born again, not of uh, corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Didn't when you get saved, didn't God uh, overshadow you and overcome you and impregnate you, if you will, with the power of the Holy Ghost to quicken you and make you alive and give you a spiritual home in heaven and put you in a spiritual body? Amen. Yes, absolutely. He did that. So the only way you're going to understand somebody who came from a place you're not from is to have a walk with him, have a talk with him, have a, have a spirit of God and walk in that spirit and communicate in that spirit and let the Holy Spirit supply your every need. Yes, amen. You think supplying your need, my gosh, supply all my need. Well, I'll have my, my, my home heating oil taken care of. I'll have my food taken care of. I'll have my clothes and my, and my gasoline and my car and my house. You think that's what you have as a, as a need to supply. No, the only need you have is the need of spiritual things because those are things that natural man cannot... You know you can get your own food on your own. Yeah, that's right. You know unsaved people have plenty of food in their refrigerator. Yeah. Unsaved people have plenty of clothes on their back. Mm -hmm. Unsaved people have plenty of, uh, of fuel to heat their homes. You know that, don't you? The natural man can obtain all those things without the Spirit of God doing any of it. But you know what the natural man cannot get on his own? Spiritual, Spiritual things. Yeah. So my God shall supply all your need. Ain't talking about your physical needs. Yeah. Amen. He's talking about your spiritual needs that you cannot obtain or acquire or buy or work hard enough to get on your own. Yes. All those other things are additional benefits. <laughs> Because God could take away all that stuff if right. He wanted Amen. to. God just lets you keep it. Amen. Right. He just lets you keep it. That's right. But the spiritual things, the natural things, uh, the, the natural man cannot obtain the need, the supply of the spiritual things because he needs God to give him those things. Yeah. And so you don't get anything out of church or reading a Bible or prayer or fellowship or, or uh, 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 women's get-togethers or men's breakfasts or prayer meetings because there's no supply of the Spirit behind it. You're doing it all in the flesh. That's why you don't go. That's why you don't do. That's why you get bored so easily. And I understand it. Look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Listen, I'm coming through Leviticus right now. I mean, it, it's, you know what you need to get anything out of Leviticus? You need the supply of the Spirit. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. You do. You need the supply of the Spirit. I haven't read my Bible much, about 16 times in my lifetime. 
And the only way to get anything going through at another time mm -hmm. is the supply of the Spirit to get something more That's out of right. it. Because the time, the one time that I go through my entire Bible, all 66 books, if I don't get something out of the Bible, that's about the time I'm hanging it up. Because yeah. Yeah, I know I have hit flat bottom broke, spiritually speaking. Yeah. Because now my natural man is reading the Bible and I am not being supplied anything by the Spirit of God. Something is seriously broken right. Right. in me. If I can read that entire book, all 66 books, and not get something you wouldn't, you wouldn't out of anyway. the Holy Spirit as a result yeah. of reading that Bible. Yeah. And that's why a lot of Christians don't read it. That's why a lot of Christians don't open it, don't crack it, don't study it, because they don't get anything out of it. Because it's much weariness to the flesh. Yeah, yeah. But the Spirit of God is what motivates you, is what mm -hmm. should drive you to go back through it another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother Jim, what were you saying there, sir? I, I was saying you wouldn't even get through the first book. Yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah you're right. But I, I, I think sometimes it does, sometimes our, our own self-will motivates us to keep going. But you might get through Genesis because a lot of stuff happening. But I'm telling you, Exodus is real exciting because you got the, the drowning of Pharaoh and the plagues of Egypt. I mean, those things are good stories and that. But I'm telling you, once you hit Leviticus, man, it's all about sacrificial uh, lambs and ordinances and rites and rituals. That's as dry as crackers that the Holy Spirit supplied you with something. Yeah, yeah. And you, if you can't see yourself there mm -hmm. in the book of Leviticus as a New Testament Christian in an Old Testament world trying to understand uh, the spiritual uh, sustenance that's there, right. it just becomes very boring and mundane. And so you'll just begin to do one of these things. Well, I'll, just, yeah. I'll read the Psalms. You know, you don't, you don't ever go back to it. What, what, when you start, when that starts to become where you're at in your Christian life, it's not long before you can't get through it. Yeah. Any book in the Bible, mm -hmm. and it just goes up on a shelf somewhere and collects dust, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because the natural man. Ephesians five verse seventeen. Well, you're right, brother Jim. You're right. Large part there. You're right. Ephesians five seventeen. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, he says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Mm -hmm. You know why a lot of Christians don't know what the will of the Lord is? Mm -hmm. It's because the Holy Spirit has to supply you what His will is. Right. Ephesians 5.17 yep. The Holy Spirit has yep. to supply the will of God in your life for you to understand what God's will is for your life. Now we know some natural wills that are in the Bible to do. I'm staying from fornication and all those things. We know there are some, some logistical things in the Bible that God says do's and don'ts. We understand all that. But I'm saying as it pertains to your life, what is God's will for your life? A lot of Christians can never get to that place where they understand what the will of God is in their life because it takes the Holy Spirit to supply the understanding of what God's will is in your life. And so a lot of Christians, they get frustrated. Because they don't ever get to the place where they know, what does God want me to do as a Christian? Mm -hmm. Well, you're never going to know that unless the Holy Spirit reveals that to you. Yeah. But He can't reveal it to you if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you're going through Christian life as a as filled with the natural man, you're never going to understand what the will of the Lord is. That's discernment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of Christians end up doing a lot of things and then make messes of their lives or make messes of ministries or make messes of of things they try to do because they're doing it in the flesh. And they just do this thing here or that thing there or this thing over there. They're, they're, they're spiritual schizophrenics. They're spiritually ADHDers. They, they can't stay on one spiritual task long enough to see the thing through because God ever told them to do it. Right, that's right. Their moms told them to do it. Their wives told them to do it. Their children told them to do it. Their pastor told them to do it. But the Holy Spirit never... Because if the Holy Spirit tells you to do it, then the Holy Spirit's got to supply everything you need That's to do it. Yep. Right. And the moment the Holy Spirit dries up the supply to do, the, to do what He's called you to do is the time that God says you're through that, doing that thing. And now is discerning, Lord, what now do I do? Uh, look at John 7.37 then we'll close with this John 7.37 so without the supply of the Spirit there is no salvation you don't get saved without the Holy Spirit quickening you uh, without the Holy Spirit there's no supply of comfort you know that's why the natural man watches the stuff and reads the books 
and goes to therapy. You know why they do all that stuff? It's not because they need it all the time. It's because it it appeases the natural man. They're being comforted by the natural man. The natural man has the words of uh, has the wisdom of men. Whereas comfort is supposed to come. Wherefore, comfort one another by these things. What things? The scriptures. Amen. These are the things that are written for time are written for our learning and admonition and for our comfort. Amen. God wrote you an entire Bible to comfort you. Amen. Well, I don't get any comfort when I read the Bible. That's the natural man saying that. Right. Right. You're not you're not you're not acting like a Christian is supposed to act. You're not behaving like a Christian. You're not talking or thinking like a Christian is supposed to talk or think. When you say there's no comfort in the Bible, do you hear what you're saying? The Holy Spirit's job. You know who, what the Holy Spirit is called? He's called the Comforter. So if you say when you read that Bible, you get no comfort, therefore you have to go pay Dr. Smell Fungus $100 an hour. To supply you comfort therapy, you're thinking like a natural carny, fl carnal, fleshly man. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you ever, I mean, do you hear yourself sometimes when we say the things we say? I don't get anything out of church. I don't get any comfort when I hear him preach. All I get is conviction. Well, maybe the conviction is the comfort you need. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But you don't realize that because you're too carnal to understand it. <laughs> And the sermon will tell you that. All right, uh, John seven thirty seven, last verse. John seven thirty seven. John seven thirty seven. In the last day. Now, do you know you're in the last days? Yes. Amen. You are in the last days. Is that right? Yes. And so uh, uh, you're in the last days. So in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, "If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink." Now, the dark natural man says, "Where's the water?" Mm -hmm. Right? The natural man says, where's the glass of water? But the spiritual man looks beyond the glass of water and says, okay, that'll satisfy a temporary thirst. But he ain't talking about that. He's talking about something much greater than that. Because then in verse 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But in case you didn't get it, natural man, in case you're, you know, like me, a little slow to the punch. But this he spake of the who? Spirit. This he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Well, now we know that Christ has been glorified. We know that we have received yes, the yes. Spirit of God being quickened by His Spirit, being baptized by His Spirit. So what should be flowing out of the Christian life if He's saved? Bellies of living water. Yes, amen. Rivers of living water should be flowing forth out of an individual who is saved. And if he's not, or if she's not, putting forth rivers of living water out of his or her belly... The supply of the Spirit has been dried up. The well has been dried up. Why? You know why? What did it take to get the Holy Spirit to begin with? What does it say there? He that what? He that believeth on me as the what? Okay? If your well is dried up, sir, ma'am, if your well is dried up, if you don't get anything out of church, if you don't get anything out of passing your track, out tracks, reading your Bible, pray, going out street, out, uh, passing out, uh, uh, holding up signs, if you get nothing out of that and your well is dried up, you know what I know about you? You've stopped believing the scriptures. You've stopped believing because you cannot read that Bible and believe what it says and the Holy Spirit not deal with you. Amen. So, you know what you're doing? You're either not reading it or you're reading it in the natural man, not believing what you're reading. You're just reading to read. But you're not actually believing. What is believing? It is applying by faith what you're reading. What is salvation? It is believing. What is believing there? It is applying what you're hearing about the gospel to yourself. What is believing the scriptures? Applying what you're reading to yourself. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit supplies the water you need to begin to enjoy your Christian life. Amen. And that helps make others enjoy yeah. Amen. you. Amen. 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 Amen.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sunday school hour.